Let's take a look now how we can leverage NFS storage with VMware ESX. Specifically, we're going to enable NFS checkpoints so that we can do quick file recovery. Later on, we're going to be going through that. First off, let's create a new file system. We'll call it VM Data Store, and we're going to leverage our primary fiber channel drives in our storage pool. We're going to make this, um, this file system, say, 20 gig in size, and I'm also going to select Auto Extend and enable that. And we'll set our high watermark for threshold and check on our data mover and then hit apply. As you can see, the file system is created. At this point, we're going to go into the export itself and configure the access control. We're going to specify the network where our VM kernel interface on our ESX host is residing. And that way this host can see that NFS mount point and gain access to it. So let's go into storage configuration, add storage, select network file system, and we're going to put in the IP address of the copper giggy interface on the Solera, specifically the mount point that's been specified for that file system, and we'll give it a data store name. Call this new data store. Once that's done, we connect and you can now see the new data store in the list of available storage. Take a look at that. You can see it's brand new and we're ready to create some VMs. So let's create a new VM. Let's create a, uh, a Windows 2003 server. Uh, we'll call it SQL App Server. And for this particular demo, we'll consider this our production workload. We'll specify the storage to reside on new data store, our new NFS mount. Accept the defaults. And then we'll commit that. So the next thing we're going to do is just uh, power this up. We've already configured the CD-ROM, and it's going to go off and install. Now, in the meanwhile, what we'd like to do is go to the Windows host where we're managing the environment, go into um, Users and Computers for Active Directory, and you can see there's the Solera. It shows up. It's an available host within the um, Active Directory domain. We're going into the Share Manager now. We're going to actually specify that, um, that new data store share that's being, pre being presented from the Solera, we're going to mount it to this Windows host and we're going to access this via the SIFS protocol. What's cool about this is from this host we can actually leverage things like VSS previous versions and actually roll back to an earlier point in time. Again, that's integration with uh, our checkpoints from a Solera perspective. So as you can see, we're deploying our VM, it's on the data store, it's all installed, and uh, we'll power it up and you can see it's up and running. The next step what we're going to do here is uh, go to that data store that we've created and create a checkpoint. This is a point in time snapshot that's going to provide us an ability later on to roll back in the event of a corruption or an error. We'll call this VM data store. Snap one, and we're going to specify the uh, ATA pool as its uh, storage. Now, to simulate this failure or error, we're actually going to go into the v VMX file, the configuration file for this particular SQL guest, and we're going to manipulate it. We're going to simulate an error here. We're going to effectively remove the contents of that VMX file, save it off. We're going to also go into the VMDK file and do a similar action. This is just to simulate a corruption of some kind where the config file and or the VM, uh, VMDK file are destroyed. So that presents us with an opportunity to go back to that checkpoint that we just created and then do a quick point in time recovery of those files. As you can see, we try to power on our, our host, our, our SQL guest, and what do we see but an error related to the VMX file being corrupted or missing. 
So what we do is we right click on the BMX file, select properties, go to previous versions, and you can see for that file we have a previous version. This is coming from that NFS checkpoint that we created. We restore that, and then now we go to the next level where now the disk is missing and it's being reported corrupted and we do the same properties previous versions and we can now restore that file as well back to its point in time optionally we could go to the higher level directory and do a properties on that and restore the entire directory if we liked so we can go to properties previous versions and do an entire folder level recovery so it's very uh, flexible easy to use and high value for quick and dirty recovery So at this point, we go back to our guest, and lo and behold, it powers up.